morning, Sonic. Long time no see. How you guys doing? Dracula, how you been, dude? Man, I'm good. I was telling Emmett here that I finally got a haircut. I was in the trenches for so long that it was time to stop looking like a homeless person, and I found an hour to go get my haircut. So nice. Um, I'm starting to feel like a normal person again. Had a pretty busy calendar there for about a solid four weeks, so kind of enjoying a few days of just normalcy. Nice, dude. Yeah, you're looking sharp. I'm glad you managed to squeeze out some you time. Hopefully, they gave you the little scalp massage. Yeah, they massaged my scalp. They shaved my neck, like all this stuff, man. It was fantastic. It was yeah, you know what? You deserve it, Dracula. Me, personally, I just came back from one of the grimiest cities on the East Coast. You ever heard of Philadelphia? That's where Will Smith's from. I've, I've West, heard of it. West only, Philly. only in that capacity have I heard of Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Will Smith's from it, but... I think it's it sounds like a cool place. Yeah, it was great. It was great. A little a little underground city, not a lot of people have heard of. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I, I I missed I missed the show earlier this week, so we got a super long one today, right? To make up for Dracula, that's what's on the that's what's on the. Yeah, we got agenda. some we got some usual content, and then we have the guys from Spirit Swap coming in. So if you remember, if you remember our episode. In case you're newer to Phantom and you saw our episode about the old guard, um, Spirit was like a big force last run on Phantom. Um, just like many other projects, they they weathered the bear, but it was a tough it was a tough go there. So they actually the project switched hands. Um, I guess it was like fall of last year or so. So that new team's been grinding away. We got them coming in here to just to talk about what they've been up to, what they got planned. So pretty excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're also going to be talking about various meme coins uh, because it's pretty much mostly what's been popping off lately <laughs> uh, on Phantom. Uh, and we're also going to talk about Lynx, Lynx Finance, uh, Perps Exchange. Now, not, not native to Phantom, but coming to Phantom. Uh, one of their last uh, collateral types they've integrated was Brush from one of the old guard, Paint Swap. But <laughs> yeah, let's get this show started, Dracula. Uh, I'm sure people, I'm sure the market, I haven't looked at the charts or the markets or Twitter since I went on my little vacation. So <laughs> I'm sure everything is going great. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and let's just keep the energy moving, dude. Yeah, man, it's a... Uh... There's been zero pullbacks. It's just up only um, across the board. So everybody's just super happy right now. Euphoric, oh, yeah. even. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. Let's There's no red. It. No red like in the last week. It's crazy. Let's talk about the fans and prices. Pull it up um, just to double check. But yeah, I mean, look, this to me, <clears throat> Dracula, when you look at this, what do you think? I think that it's um, that old saying. People will remind you sometimes, which is zoom out. Um, yeah, you know, if we're looking at what we've been, you know, dealing with here since the bear market, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, if we're looking at this, this must be like the all time chart. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, what we're seeing here is in the scope of things, everyone having this pullback right now, we're still on the right track. Personally, we were talking about this before the show. I'm not like super, I'm not super scared about the market right now. Um, there's mm -hmm. always a pullback before the halving. Um, it's almost like clockwork, really. Um, there's always some kind of big pullback. Then we also, you have, you know, people having to pay their taxes. You have the halving pullback. Then on top of that, we, you know, almost had another war erupt over the weekend. Um, that's, Wait, what? No way. <laughs> Yeah, you must have missed that while you're in Philadelphia. So Yeah, we didn't um, get that news in Philadelphia. I don't know. To me, it just kind of seems par for the course. Um, we're still holding at a good level. Once we get through this having and the market starts making its way back up, um, I think it'll be business as usual. So hopefully no one got shaken out too hard. I agree with you, Dracula. I don't think it's looking that bad at all. Uh, to be honest, I think they call this a healthy pullback. I mean, not to say that history repeats itself, but I mean, if you look at the chart performance, 
throughout time you get massive pullbacks buddy it's just how it works you know it's never going to be all up all the time always see i'm copacetic baby i feel a-okay you know why because i wasn't in uh perps at the time which is what we're going to talk about soon um yeah if you were in perps you might not be super happy of the events that just unfolded but if you're holding spot you know i think you're still comfy maybe even just you know this isn't just talking about phantom this is talking about everything i mean everything pulled back um you know to me i had a tweet about it that you know i was like i'm buying the majors i'm buying the alts like Mm -hmm. to me this is a good pullback this is a good buying opportunity um for me not financial advice yeah see it's not for me because i have all of my money already deployed I'm 100%. Anytime I get a dollar, it goes straight to Andre Cronier. That's how serious I am about Phantom, okay? And your associates are about to come in with a load of dry powder. So. Oh, yeah, and my associates that uh, <laughs> my associates that I linked up with in Philly. I got some real big Philly movers in the Fent trade. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's a real problem up there, actually. It's kind of spooky, dude. I saw a woman emerge from the subway wailing like a banshee. It was fucking <laughs> horrifying. Um, but moving on. Uh, we were talking about perps. Perps can hurt you, can ruin your life, but they can also change your life for the better. Um, and one purveyor of perps, links, protocol, they're coming on a phantom. They're actually already here. Uh, they just launched a uh, fork onto phantom. Uh, they're pretty cool because they take any token as collateral. Um, they just listed brush and they're really showing phantom a lot of love. Uh, same what we're all feeling is Phantom still going to 10. Uh, but they love Phantom so much, they're willing to destroy their own project uh, by taking new <laughs> coins as collateral. I don't really know how they do it, but apparently this is a common thing for them is to take kind of like just anything as collateral. Uh, why might not you why, why might you not want to do that, Dracula? Take, take meme coins as collateral for perps. Well, I mean, obviously... Um... It's a, the more volatile the asset, um, you know, especially on perps, you're looking at a situation where it's, it's definitely more of a gamble. You know, it's like you're, you're already putting leverage on your trade, but then with a a meme coin, you know, with its volatility, you're really kind of saying, all right, this thing could go a thousand X or it could go to zero. And, uh, you know, that could happen very quickly on either end. So, um, but I think it's cool actually. Um, you know, if people want to do that, they should do it. There's a lot of, there is opportunity there. Um, I do. Yeah. I think that um, there are a handful of like the bigger perp dexes, uh, like hyper liquid mm-hmm. that will like take on like the newer, you know, the newer tokens. But at the same time, um, at it's the end of the day, at the end of the day, the, the price moving around is like an instrument for the collateral. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. It's not, you know, so you're still, you're, you're betting your, your phantom or your US, you know, DC or whatever. So it's more of like, you know, an instrument for the odds. Um, so I think, Hey, if somebody wants to take that gamble, uh, let them do it. I say right on to them. Yeah. Does Hyperliquid let you do permission? Like, can you list permission, permissionless permission? No, you can't do that. Permission. They, they got to whitelist you, but they do have to whitelist you. Okay. Um, so no permissionlessness on Hyperliquid, but on links, uh, except not yet. That's a thing that they're, they're putting in here. Uh, Dracula. Now that's permissionless cool. listing, which is very interesting because that yeah. just means any, Tom, Dick, or Andy could upload their little meme coin on here as collateral. Um, not quite yet ready, but uh, apparently all you have to do is like research, reach out to their team, and they they will uh, they'll complete the process for you. They don't have like a front end for it. Um, but yeah, interesting project. Uh, I'm not super. I'm just being real here. I'm not super stoked about just these pairs I can trade. Um, I could probably, I might use links for this, but uh, they're nothing that exciting, right? Just going long and short versus Bitcoin, Ether, BNB. Uh, I, mean, I like to trade Phantom, dude, personally. <laughs> this is a token I'm more familiar with. Yeah. I'm more familiar with the psychology of the Phantom user, you know, than the average Bitcoin holder. But we don't need to get into that now. <laughs> so uh, moving right along, though, 
meme tokens still rolling out, dude, as part of Andre and the Goatsters initiatives. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I came back is there's a bunch of new meme coins. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, many you know. that they're duplicating names. We got one called Speed and Speedy. Are well, they a team? Okay, so yeah, so this is uh this is fun here, but these launched I guess about a week within each other. So first you got Speedy oh, here. Dude. Um now that's more of this is a, a goat incubator project like we had been discussing uh last episode. Um a little different than I guess Dre in this in terms of Dre still hasn't launched. That's been more of like I guess a, a slow burn speedy. Everybody was just chilling one night, and all of a sudden, this chart erupted out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, April 11th. But yeah, they just literally had a tweet, dropped the contract, and that thing was, you know, was rolling. Wait, so, where's the chart, dude? Throw it up. Throw it up on the board for me, dude. 767k of liquidity right now. From what I'm looking at, I'm pretty sure they actually burnt their liquidity. So that's kind of cool. They burnt their tokens. Um, if I'm wrong on that, somebody let me know. But now it says here. They burnt it, so that's crazy. So at least that's a uh, that's a pretty that's a nice gesture to have when you're launching a meme to show that hey, we're never gonna pull liquidity on this thing, and there's always gonna be liquidity for trading. Mm -hmm. um, so this, yeah, they've this done. Be, this could be a bullish pullback here. Then is what I'm hearing. Yeah, and they've done. Um, I want to find it here. Oh my god. Why Apparently, like they've already got a Poloni X listing, but I was trying to find, they had a billboard here. Ah, here we go. So they got a billboard live in Las Vegas. That's insane. Right outside the Seneco and Hyatt for the Holiday <laughs> Inn. That's crazy. Right across the street from the MGM Grand. And Liquor World. <laughs> yeah, well, Liquor this World, you get a lot crazy, of Crazy, dude. Wait, go back. Go back one page, please, Dracula. Can you scroll up some? Keep, keep, okay, look at this. What is this shit, dude? <laughs> <laughs> what is this, dude? This is a meme? This is like a little little it's, anime character hula hooping? It's kind of like... Um, Not even a waifu, bro. It's like fast bluey. Yeah, it's yeah, like bluey's hot right now, so maybe that's a yeah. good call. Yeah, it's more like bluey than it is like Sonic the Hedgehog, which I can I can get down with. We should be putting the the billboards for this outside daycares to get that bluey audience, you know. Yeah, get the kids to make their parents buy with their credit cards on Poloniex. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Could you imagine your little four year old going up to you, "Mom, buy you, buy you Speedy. You gotta go I want a bag of Speedy. I want, I, bet, I want to. Now, hey guys, the kids want the Speedy plushie. There you go. Yeah, I mean, the Speedy not, plushie probably would do better than the Cronia plushie, for we're sure. We're not going to stop until we get some plushies around here. So I don't like how he's always drooling, though. He's like, <laughs> is he is he rabid or is he hungry? That is the question. Is he hungry for game rabid. or is he rabid? So do we know who's behind this project? Because it's got some production value. It does. Um, Their website, well, I mean, it's something extremely groundbreaking, but it's at least usable. It's got animations. Can I show you this? Can I show you the roadmap real quick? Let's let's check it out. I think you might like appreciate this. It's a pretty strong road roadmap. So oh. first they build, then they onboard, and then they take over. And that's <laughs> just that simple, baby. This is this is a good roadmap, actually, in my opinion. Yeah. As a developer, you love this kind of thing where it's just like, you know, build like it. it. Yeah. <laughs> launch it <laughs> that's it you launch um, it people get into it and then you win yeah well i mean i hope i hope it's a huge success not just for the phantom goat but for the phantom network as a whole you know rising tide and all that hopefully yeah. this attracts all the money from uh sonic obama inichu or uh what's the other one that's really big uh, yeah, dog with hat. Dog with hat. That's it. Yeah, Pepe. Whatever. I mean, I hear. I hear. Whiff is going to put their dog on the on the orb in Las Vegas. They were raising it. money for that, and I'm not sure what happened with that, but um, I don't think it Rugged. made it to the orb yet. <laughs> yeah, I might have rugged. Um, but 
I can I feel like I kind of see what they're going for here. I mean, with this incubator, I think it's more of a longer term play. It's like, you know, you're thinking about what people like to see when they see these meme projects. And I think that if you time this right with the hype for Sonic and the network kind of building, um, you know, then all of a sudden you got eyes on it and these projects are like low millions market cap. And that's like where you want these things to be. If it's going to pump, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you get this thing to like the low millions in the market cap and people go, Oh, there's still like tons of room there for, you know, for gains. So I can see what they're doing there. Um, of course, shout out to the community projects that have, you know, been around here. Yeah. I mean, he's just like us. He's literally just, uh, Sonic, just a different animal, but like visual design is all the same, but Hey, it's a successful one. Autistic children love Sonic and autistic children also love cryptocurrency. So it might just work out. Um, <laughs> I know, I know that's the game plan for the shadow exchange as well. Let's, uh, there's, there's something else going on here. There's something yeah. nefarious maybe cooking up under the surface. We're not here just to talk about speedy guys. Cause you know what? We don't even give a damn about speedy really, bro. I was bullshit and I don't give a fuck about speedy dude. I don't care if they live or die. <laughs> All right. I do care about this next project. So within a week of each other, we got speedy, but we also have da 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 speed. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that just make you sick, dude? So, yeah, so we have Speedy and then we have Speed, which is kind of like, I guess, the other end of the spectrum here for, you know, Speedy, you got like the lovable, memeable cartoon character and then Speed. Yeah, it's kind of more of like a, a ticker Bitcoin, you know, Harry Potter, Obama, whatever, um, you know. And then it's like grimy. It's like grimy. It's yeah, it's grimy. Ugly. Yeah, like, you know, it's you got the guy. Cheap got this guy here i think that's like the phantom logo on meth crystals yeah yeah that's um, meth crystals yeah so you know or, but the memes yeah. are on point though this guy you know they're they're cranking out the memes here oh this is cool uh clockworky who also did art for the uh the uh, phantom meme mania where he made all the little nfts of all the projects he's already got a little piece here on it that's pretty awesome like okay, that okay that's the best piece of art for this so far. Oh, look, he's peeing like the Calvin sticker, you know? Oh, I, I just, dude, I just saw that. Yeah, that's the thing about Clockworky. Uh, if you aren't familiar with his art, it's like... He pees? You can... <laughs> no, not, not so much about the urine as much as uh, if you ever see one of his pieces, you can just stare at it and you'll just start seeing so many like little details and like something new. Like like I said, I hadn't even like thought of that. Um, oh, yeah. No, I'm know, noticing you, it in this one. Like You, you just start seeing all this smile. crazy stuff on pieces and that's awesome um but yeah um i think they you know they had a pretty good launch as well just looking at charts here now this is just comparing you know oh my god dude that's perfection that's beauty. That, that wick there but yeah this is you know not a bad looking chart in my opinion um you know just total opposite end of the spectrum though like i said you got speedy with a little more of like the i don't know the bc polished feel to get attention but then you have speed which you know like i said you know, like we were saying is a little more on like the grimy um, smaller community side of things speedy is definitely corporate speedy is definitely made by some guy who's got a job or has had a job working for a, a big tech company he's made a couple landing pages he's got a <laughs> college degree speed it's for the real jits. You know what I'm saying? Out here on the streets, dude. It's for the people. It's for <laughs> people who have walked to work before. It's for people who have flipped burgers. It's for people who have <laughs> done meth in the walk-in cooler. And that's what's so cool about it. It's because crypto is for everybody. You know what I mean? And now we're starting to branch out a little bit. I might be underselling it a little bit, I think. No, I, I think you've... Uh... I think you nailed it there that, um, you know, just looking at you had two speed related tokens on two very different ends of the spectrum. Imagine if they collabed, you would get you would get speedy the little fox who's always drooling everywhere and he would like be taking a whiz. You know what I mean? And he would and hit then, some meth and like go nuts. Yeah, he'd have red eyes, he'd be doing some meth and he'd be <laughs> taking a whiz. And then the speed would be like drooling and like, I guess, running really fast. 
<laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's an opportunity for some fan art here. If uh, anyone is creative enough, you should know, go ahead and give that a try. Go ahead and try and render that in, in real life. Moving on from that. So that was just a couple launches, you know, and the memes are still coming. I think we're still in that period where we still need some DeFi. I'm, I'm glad to see Lynx is getting their stuff together here, but the DeFi is coming. Um, is it Dracula? Give me an is. example. It is. There are people already building, getting ready for Sonic. There's going to be a lot of new DeFi on Sonic. And hopefully on that road leading up to Sonic, we will still keep seeing like some new projects launch. Um, but in the meantime, it's still going to be, I think, a lot of gambling in the casino while we wait for the market to correct, start marching back up here through the end of the year, Sonic dropping. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of going back to something else regarding the foundation that they've kind of changed for Sonic, where, you know, they're they're doing this gas monetization Oh, and here we go. For Sonic, you're going to have 90% gas monetization, right? Um, right now, for Phantom, it's 15%. But 85,000 Phantom, that's, you know, hey, that's a decent chunk of change. And you got your winners here. You know, you got the, the usual suspects there. You know, you got Spooky, you got Beethoven, Paint Swap. Um, Layer zero, not sure where what they're exactly doing, but of course, equalizer, uh, mummy, which is also a perps, perp decks, um, solidly, as in the rebranded solidly that um launched here in like the last year or so. Velocimeter, we go, and maybe you know who these two guys are. I do not, they look familiar, but I can't remember. I'm just fixated on WeGo. Maybe someone um, can tell me if it's WeGo or WhyGo, so I don't... Know. Actually, don't tell us. We don't want to know. <laughs> I had a question. What does this mean for me, dude? I'm not a builder. Lower operating costs, so maybe less fees, huh? I think that what could potentially happen... Now, I know a lot of these projects kind of end up, you know, using it for, for their operating costs. Um, but let's say that we had 2021... Mm -hmm. phantom DeFi traffic going on now imagine if you had so much in these gas rebates that protocols were able to start fighting on giving those rewards to their users to me it's it's <clears throat> it's like a reverse optimism you know like optimism is kind of famous for these op grants that they just you know make it rain all over the place well for this you gotta you gotta kind of sing for your supper but that's still phantom coming back to you for people using your protocol. So mm -hmm. I think if the volume and the traffic is right, you could see down the road, you could see these protocols being like, oh, guess what? This month we're adding extra incentives to this pool for staking and it's just pure phantom. So come and get it. You know pure, what I'm saying? Uncut. And it's non-diluted, non-diluted. Straight from South Africa. This is the real Phantom. shit. So, yeah, right into your veins. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good incentive for builders. 90% is quite a lot. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of curious how they can fund that and how long can they fund that? Well, it's like I described um, when they kind of dropped those details on Sonic, where that to me is a great incentive because that doesn't cut off. I mean, they're just – once. Once that starts, um, they're always going to be able to earn that from the traffic they generate. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so that's like a that's a perpetual money machine there if you keep volume on your, you know, project. That's hot, dude. That's awesome. You don't got to you don't got to worry about, you know, somebody saying, "Oh, the grants are over" or whatever. I mean, you know, if you get enough traffic to your project, you're always going to get those gas rebates. So if you're confident monetization, I don't know if rebates are the right word, gas monetization. So the beautiful news here is if you're a confident enough, skilled enough builder, and you're sure you could build something that can generate volume, Sonic's the place to be because it's just going to pay for itself. I could definitely see it. You know, like I said, if we were, if we can, if we have enough volume generated again, 
It's the anti Ethereum because those fees will kill the gas, the transaction costs kill your ability to create complex stuff on Ethereum for the yep. most part, right? Because you can't do a bunch of transactions. But on Sonic, you're kind of uh, you're not being penalized as heavily for it. You're actually it's incentivizing these more complex structures. Is that right, Dracula? Is that a fair? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, imagine if your transactions are way more complicated. They generate more gas. Then on you Phantom, know me, when I'm yeah. cooking up a strategy, no less than thirty transactions. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> doing massive arbitrage, wash trading. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be somebody that figures out a way to game the system. So I'll be interested to see what happens. Oh yeah, there. I'd be interested to see uh, if. Like you said, anyone games the system and how how that might be patched out, if you will. Overall, it's positive. Um, like I said, I think you know the volume's right. You could see start seeing protocols, you know, saying, "Hey, we're taking maybe five ten percent for for our costs, but the rest is just getting distributed out." Whoever does that first, I think that's a you know, give me a cut because I just gave you the idea, but. Whoever does that first, I think that's going to be super bullish for their project. So, hell yeah, dude! I think you should build it, dude. I'm just going to make something that just does nothing but you know, just constantly make TXs. <laughs> and then at the end of the month, one person gets the gas monetization. It breaks it breaks the transaction down into like pennies. So like, if you want to trade a hundred Phantom for like a hundred USDC, it does it like one dollar at a time. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. <clears throat> Fan, uh, Andre's not watching this, so he'll never find out either. So <laughs> it's we, brilliant. We figured it out. We've broken the system live on air. Emmett cut <laughs> that last segment out, dude. We got these uh, spirit swap lads ready to go. And we're going to ask them the tough questions. So stay tuned. We got mascot here. Also, look at this guy. Look at this very memeable. Has somebody, is somebody going to run with mascot as a meme yet with this little guy? He's just a little guy. He's chilling. I've got a couple different sets for him. So he's like live on air right now. And then I've got him chilling, doing his normal thing. It's my regular profile picture. I've got the Twitter banner. I got a guy and he really just, he takes you care of You need one of those he's, virtual he's been avatars really so that it's like talking to us right now. Yeah. So it's like tracking your motion and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I feel like that'd be unsettling, but honestly, I'm there for the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, this is mascot team manager. Manager. Yeah. Team manager. Assistant uh, to the team manager. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> team manager in the in the uh, football club sense, and that he's screaming at all his players. And who are his players? The Spirit Swap team, the new Spirit Swap team. Yes, new Spirit Swap team. Very important there. Nothing. To, all the old team is 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 not around. So all new, all fresh. We have talked about it. You know, yeah, I was gonna say we've we've you know we had a little roundup. I guess that was a few weeks ago where we were checking in on what all the older projects were doing and um yeah happy to have you here just wanted to kind of find out um you know i i had mentioned a couple of times that your team came in kind of like fall into summer last year somewhere around there um and you've been kind of building ever since so before you guys like took over i mean what's the like what were you guys doing before you took over the project and then how did this come to be like with you guys eventually taking over the spirit project. Yeah, yeah. So uh we took over Spirit Swap, I think the first week of October. Was it October or September? I think it was October because the multi-chain hack was like late August. And then we uh vied for the vote and then took over in October. But before then, how we got the opportunity to do that is for about the last year and a half since July of 22. Um, I have been the social administrator over at Power. Some people are familiar with that project known as Power Nodes. Uh, if you guys are familiar with, if you guys remember Strong and Ring Financial and all of those uh, sort of Ponzi-esque node projects that were around in the end of 2021, first quarter 22, uh, we were birthed from that. We were a, a Ring Fork slash Thor Financial Fork uh, on Phantom, we launched in December of 21. And uh, I started out as an investor, just a regular old community member. And I have the wonderful skill of being so annoying on Discord that they'd rather just pay me uh, to be a part of the team. So at least I stop annoying people as a community member. So I didn't expect to be a part of the team. And, and here I am, you know, three years later, uh, uh, you know, 
social administrator power and team manager at spirit swap so essentially power nodes switched over from being a node project as to the hard work of the team we immediately said early early on uh this is a terrible design it's you know self-destructive and it's ponzi in nature and as investors uh with some hand on the pilot uh pilot yoke so to speak we said this is terrible has to stop so our owner who's kind of a mysterious uh individual a mysterious um, still director yes um he really has let the team do a lot of the flying and has let us sort of rework power or an nft based model that just pays out uh, we're about to begin resuming our usdc payments every month to our nft holders so we just disperse uh based on their quote unquote power level of how many nfts they have um that was representative of the nodes and things that they have uh get a usdc airdrop and we've over time have amassed about a four million esque phantom treasury or so uh we've also you know had our share of phantom validators and avalanche validators and made various investments so we're sitting on anywhere at a given time between you know two and a half to four million dollars of a war chest uh, and that allowed us to have two hundred thousand dollars to allocate directly to spirit swap for us to take over and sort of bring it back to life and bring us where we are today so a little bit about you know where we've come from so that's what the power well, side looks drop? like but God since we've gotten into the spirit swap side um we have been learning a lot you know running a a was once formerly node project turned into nft project that disperses usdc to its holders is incredibly different than managing and operating and renovating house on a on a once you know formidable exchange i can see that where you guys probably had your work cut out for you um so, I mean, so when, when you guys, was it kind of like you, you bought the project or was it kind of like, we're just, we're injecting some capital and taking over and. You know, there was no paperwork. Yeah. So I, we will, we will tread lightly on what we want to call it as far sure. as, you know, how modest we want to be. I like to think that we uh, provided the cash to prove that we're serious about wanting to make spirit swap yeah. a success yeah, and keep it alive. Enough. So I don't think, you know, saying we bought it or we own it, right? Um, I think we run it and we have rights to claim, you know, that if Spirit Swap were a huge success again, that, you know, I can pay my guys a couple bucks. I think that that's a fair right to say, but we don't really like to, we're, we're, we're pretty all modest guys. We all, everyone on our team works full-time jobs outside of crypto. We all are regular, normal guys. We, every single one of our team members started out as investors before we became you know, team members. So we all are very boots on the ground, ears to the floor kind of team uh, that is first and foremost, always putting the project uh, and its health and success first. Uh, so we do run the project, I guess you can say, you know, we, we bought it, but we really don't ever use that term just if only to keep ourselves in check of like, hey, like, we're here for the sole benefit of the community, the project and the space as a whole that we love. Um, and if you know, we can make a successful business as we go. That's great. So, well, so you said that, um, you know, in a way it was kind of like renovating a house. So when you first got in there, I mean, what was, were you just like, okay, this works, this doesn't work, but like, how did the, how did like the plan formulate for, you know, how you were going to change the decks and like what you were going to add to it? Yeah. I so I'm excited you asked that. So first and foremost, when we got in our dev, popped his head into once I got all the accounts from the previous ownership, my dev popped his head in and he said, wow, this is a shit show uh, financially as far as what we were spending money on. Uh, so in the first month, we cut down our operating costs uh, while making our exchange faster, cut down our operating costs by about 80% because they were just paying for so much extraneous stuff uh, and services that weren't needed. Uh, my dev was pulling his hair out. He was like, this is terrible. So he did a great job of optimizing our costs. So to run spirit swap, it costs us very little on a, on a, on a server side functional standpoint, uh, on you know, from a technology end. Um, the other things that we really had to fix up and understand was all of our team. There's 10 of us. There were 10 of us. Now there are 11 of us was, uh, educating ourselves really deep diving into the spirit swap tokenomic, you know, behemoth that has been sort of built up the last two years because we're the third team to take over spirit swap and we are the last team to take over spirit swap whoa we, uh, you know we we don't we don't we don't hand off projects this thing is our is our baby we love it it's as much as our home 
as power was. I spend 95% of my work uh, in crypto on spirit swap and not power at the moment. And that's, you know, to the betterment of, of both of those projects. Um, so yeah, no, we don't hand off projects. We will all, we will ride this until we are not here anymore, so to speak. So we're very excited about that. That spirit swap is ours. We will never hand this off. We won't sell it. Um, we're locked in. So pump for that. But understanding that the, the tokenomics, you know, was a big thing because for us, it was coming. It wasn't just, oh, they have spirit token, right? It's spirit, in spirit, lin spirit, sin spirit, rain spirit, understanding how these all work in the ecosystems that they're buried deep into, right? Building relationships with those ecosystems. Um, that was probably the biggest amount of time. And there are still times where I'll ask former one of our, our, our newest team member, fantastic guy, uh, the, the best blockchain sleuth I've ever met. I ask him stuff all the time, even this week, you know, hey, what's happening here? I don't understand this system. And he'll have to pull up, you know, transaction hashes from two years ago. So I can be like, oh, okay, I see how this happened. Thank you. Uh, so that's been definitely the biggest hurdle for us is understanding and trying to, you know, really read what the last two teams have done over the last two years uh, to get to where we are now to say, okay, we understand comprehensively. How can we build and change and move on from this to be a more streamlined, more competitive experience? Um, and part of that is uh, what we're going to do and what we're excited to announce here with you guys is that uh, ideally this quarter, if not early quarter three, Spirit Swap is going to undergo a complete and full rebrand. Um, so that means new look, new name, new feel. Um, and we also have uh, brand new tokenomics, totally built by our team in-house. And with that comes completely new novel systems that don't exist at all in the in the, in the DEX marketplace um, that we feel are going to be very competitive and very exciting um, that are fair market protected. And uh, we've shared that a little bit with a couple of contacts that we have that are very, very, very close knit. And we've received positive feedback on those designs. Um, so they're all done. We just have to get them built. Luckily, we have a really bang up team that can build them very quickly and uh, they're intrinsically far simpler coming from our, our sort of trauma from coming from the node space and the Ponzi-esque design that was originally baked into those systems. Everything we make is incredibly not Ponzi. So all of the things that we build in are designed to have true fair market value uh, that will operate in a bull market and a bear market uh, autonomous, autonomously, right, controlled by the users themselves. So we are super stoked to be sharing that stuff coming coming uh, in, in the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, I wish I could share more. You know, I was about to say that um, what, what is the alpha then? Give us the give us some alpha. Give us a nibble. Give us oh, man. See, I our Twitter was hacked for six months, man. If I drop anything, <laughs> there's going to be a fake airdrop. And people are going to be clicking it and then I'm going to be putting my tail in between my legs. I. Let me come back in a month and I will give you guys a bunch oh, of what a tease, dude. What's the what's the new what's the new brand name? What is the new look? Man, I can't share that either. Can't even share that. All right. Have you right. used Twitter? As soon as I say it, someone's gonna make the account. It's gonna be game over. All but right. But the names right. have been secured, domains have been purchased. So we are we are we got teams, we have professional teams working on UI, UX, logo branding. Uh, so everything's cooking up really quick. Things are going to happen really fast. And Spirit Swap, formerly Spirit Swap, um, is going to be a force to be reckoned with again very soon. So we're super stoked on that. Right on. So this is going to be Q3. So next at the latest Q3. I mean, we hope to get a lot of this rolling Q2. Um, essentially, what I had just shared with our community the other day is once our farms for V3 are updated and out. Um, it's going to be all hands on deck moving on to these two things as far as tokenomics and rebranding and getting those built. And we have three very, very highly motivated, focused devs. And they're the only ones of our team that don't work jobs uh, outside of crypto. So they are fully focused on spirit swap. That is all they do. That is all they work on. And they crush it. Well, um, you, you mentioned V3. So is that a yeah. kind of like a final version of spirit is launching? Or is it already launched? V3 is out. Yeah. Our concentrated liquidity is out with fully integrated UI experience. So people can, you know, uh, interact with V3 and understand the tick ranges that they're deploying, which um, we're very excited about. Uh, obviously, once those farms are out, that'll help a lot of volume and a lot of liquidity sort of 
come back to spirit swap. It's just going back to my comment of reworking the last two teams, uh, mistakes and, and, and best effort, so to speak. Uh, we weren't able to just launch farms right away, right? Cause there's farms for V1, there's farms for V2. So figuring out the best way to redirect those, those, uh, those mints of those tokens every day from those farms into V3 in a meaningful and useful way. Um, and that's not a knock to them. Those teams did great in, in, in the time that they had, um, but we want to do better and we want to unify that experience for all of our users. And so once these V3 farms come out, um, we'll, we'll, we're really excited to see more users interact with concentrated liquidity as the incentivization is going to be there. Uh, which is just going to be a drop in the bucket compared to the new to tokenomics that we have coming. So very excited to sort of use that as a beta test for what's to come. Yeah. And I just got a little, um, just looking at, you know, the concentrated liquidity page. So yeah, nice little setup there. You know, you got your ticks, um, you know, nice and clean UI, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so so will there be, so you're saying you're reworking the farms and stuff. So will that be more for the new rebrand or will there be new farms on V3 before you get to that? There will be new farms on V3 before the tokenomics. Our goal is to get the power back into the hands of the users. Uh, the power. As as right. Yeah. You like that? You like, you like that little play on words there? Um, no. So we want our users to be able to, you know, have the full range of products available to them as soon as possible, which means farming spirit now, right? So that's what we're working on. Uh, some of that farm technology that we're building will translate over into the new tokenomics. Uh, but as for the time being, within the next couple of weeks, I think we'll have those farms out. Uh, they're, they're pretty, my dev keeps sending me pictures of the tests. So it, it, he's, he's really hammering it out. So I, I suspect it should be a sooner than later situation. Um, and then obviously fully new and understandable, legible farms for the tokenomics congrats to you guys that's to be honest it's like that's just very daunting to take over a project that's kind of you know had a had its own little run or its own course or whatever and then obviously we had things like multi um which from what i know about spirit i think multi was kind of nail in the coffin there because they still, had, was, they still had a treasury yeah. um so yeah i mean it sounds like you guys are grinding Excited to see. I've, I have played around with the concentrated liquidity a little bit. It's nice and smooth. Uh, you know, interface is intuitive and everything. So, uh, yeah, excited to see what you guys got here. Yeah, I, I wish I could share more. It's just we're a little a little gun shy because our Twitter was hacked for six months and we don't want to give any uh, information as far as naming and branding because somebody is watching our account very closely we have reason to believe that that person has some inside information from you know there's a mole oh shit you got a mole it, inside. well insider it, scammer it, something, well something questionable happened right when that twitter hack happened someone also changed links on the telegram to that phishing site and there was only about 15 accounts that had access to do that oh. um so and it wasn't one of my guys you got, you got <laughs> the new team you got the tech and you got the yeah. espionage in intrigue going on exactly here. yeah we got all the we're sitting on a powder keg and so. whoever finds the mole gets one million dollars usd of the new token okay <laughs> writing checks can for circle back to that one no nope. sure <laughs> <laughs> he actually posted a picture of himself on the twitter and deleted it like no way seconds. i yeah i have screenshots of it that has to be a red flag dude or a, a red herring dude he's got to be trying to misdirect you dude um, it was Crazy times, crazy times. So um, as soon as we secure that Twitter, we will share with you guys. We are, trust me, we are so stoked. We just, we don't want to have any hiccups like that was. That was a massive hiccup for us. And we don't want to relive that six month nightmare. So yeah, bro, throwing that two factor authentication, you know, it was the, the facial recognition software. <laughs> I want to have to go in person to Twitter to tweet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you're gonna to have to start paying soon, so I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I saw that. that. That's crazy. I mean, whatever. At least there's less cluttered, so people can see their spirit swap information. I can't wait for it to. There's no app anymore. You have to just text your tweets uh, to the, <laughs> the old the phone days. line back in the old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just gotta text your friends. Um, <laughs> well, so so this new 
this new like rendition of what you guys are working yeah. on. So I'm assuming, so it it is going to deploy on Phantom, and then it will also be moved to Sonic. Phantom will be our home network, yes, okay. and Sonic. Uh, we want to be on Sonic day one. That's part of our goal. Um, but we're going with a, you know, we're changing that 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 brand for a couple reasons, right? We want one to understand for new users that are going to come in with this next wave. Ideally, probably in the fall of this year is when we're expecting volume and and users to really tick up, especially as it gives the Federal Reserve a little bit more time to, you know, think about their actions and what they've done and maybe reduce those <laughs> those interest rates, uh, which will send the markets pumping. Um, we want to be on the forefront of that, but we don't want to scare people away with, you know, the phantom sort of uh, narrative of the ghost chain, right? Um, and so for a lot of people, spirit swap, uh, not to name drop, but like spooky swap, right? Those things are kind of hard baked into the theme. And we do want to get away from that a little bit so that we're not, oh, that's right. That's the exchange on the on the ghost chain. It's, oh, that's just the best exchange, right? That's the that's the direction that we want to go because uh, we do have partnerships with other networks. Um, and we're looking to get on those very soon as well. And so we want to present a brand that we're proud of uh, that doesn't feel like we will always be our team loyal to phantom we love phantom we will always work first and foremost on phantom but we don't want to hamstring ourselves from other networks thinking you know you guys are just phantom lackeys why would we put you know essentially phantom swap on our on our network mm -hmm. uh, that's not the the vibe that we want to give off we love partnerships and we love building relationships and i've met with some other networks that are we love the Phantom Foundation and our and our and our members. And I mean, Michael Kong is on our multi sig, right? So we love those guys. Uh, but we also have made really great relationships with other networks that have been incredibly friendly and incredibly inviting, and have offered us grants and all kinds of exciting opportunities. And we don't want to disrespect them by selling them a disadvantaged product. So that's also part of the incentive for us. And also because as Phantom moves away, right, with the Sonic upgrade uh, from that sort of ghost chain. Uh, themology, so to speak. So we're very excited for that. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that the rebrand is like entirely necessary. Not there's a lot of baggage uh, to yes. the spirit swap brand that is also uh, necessary to get away from. Um, so I apologize because my internet was a little spotty there. I don't know if you guys noticed. I froze up a little bit. I, I saw you time. kind of tweaking out there for a second. So <laughs> we, we may have covered this already, but I, I did want to ask like why spirit swap uh, at all if uh, there's all this baggage and you got to do all this renovation inside would it not have been easier to start fresh uh, instead of having to do all the detective work on uh, what the old team had done uh, actually no that's a good question but no it would not have been easier when we acquired spirit swap we were building power swap <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we had sunk a number of uh, dollars into ui development um, and getting all of that done, I had done pages and pages of user story experience for a lot of, you know, what was going to be power swap with our dev team. Uh, and then this opportunity arose. And even if, right, the house has burned down a little bit, so to speak, spirit swap intrinsically carries with it a lot of viewership and respect. Uh, I think that even me being here would have been a little bit tough for me to come from power and say, hey, guys, you want to interview us, right? We have a new exchange. Um, not to, not a knock to you guys, but it just that name in itself carries value. Well, yeah, it was definitely um, you do have a point there. I mean, it raised yeah. some like, oh, there's a team that took it over and mm -hmm. they're working on stuff and they're building new stuff. And yep. um, looking at the V3, um, you know, it looks nice. It's like I said, it runs smooth. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of sounds like the stars aligned because you were like building a Dex, and then it was it like, did. oh, there's also a Dex that's available just to take over. So yep. And so with that, I also there are two other points that were really good for us, and what, and the second point is that our dev team was exposed to so much more information. When you build your own exchange from scratch, you build in your own little bubble, right? You don't see what has played out over the last two years with X, Y, and Z design. You don't see certain security inevitabilities that may have occurred over the last two years. And you don't see user response to how things have happened in the exchange over the last two years. We inherited all of that when we got Spirit Swap. And my dev was able to jump in and see two, two and a half years of okay, what collateral damage has occurred so that as we build spirit swap better than ever, 
what data has do we have to rely on to say, okay, this didn't work in the past. Whereas if we had continued on with building PowerSwap, we would have built it in our perfect little bubble and launched it and said, here we go, right? And then have to wait those two years to see what issues arise. We've inherited all that knowledge at a deep, deep level because we've been so ingratiated in it, rebuilding and repairing everything. And the third thing is that when I uh, took over uh, and our team took over, um, I was added to probably 50 telegram groups, right? With Phantom Foundation, a ton of other networks, product providers, aggregators, perpetual uh, perpetuals teams, uh, things that would have taken a very long time to build relationships with those businesses. Um, I got added to in an afternoon. And now we have great relationships with a lot of the networks that we have, right? We've received over six figures of, of, of grants when we come to networks just because of those, those conversations that I was added into. So those are the main three guiding reasons that we said, hey, we could build PowerSwap and bet on us, but why not take a product that people already know and love and have them still bet on us? And we, we trust us. We like us more than any other team, right? So to speak, yeah. as stupid as it might sound. So why not have a win-win scenario and take the best parts of power swap that we were stoked for and build those into spirit swap? Wow. Well, yeah, man, those are great answers. Um, you know, when you look at it that way, it definitely is just like, yeah, I mean, it just sounds like everything lined up for you guys. Um, Corval, do you got anything else you'd like to ask? Uh, no, that's about it um exciting i mean i'm exciting to hear uh what new developments are coming down the pike uh i'm really excited to see the new brand um and kind of the innovations you were talking about things not seen on any other decks I'm stoked yeah me and my uh maybe it's my ignorance you know i i'm not a, a an incredible mathematician i do a bunch of data analytics in my day job but that's about as deep as it gets um me and, and two of our other team members, non devs sat down and we pulled up a flow chart application and we said, let's build these tokenomics. And so everything was built, you know, top down from a user standpoint at spirit. We, we do everything with this little test we call the 15 second test. So every button click, every interaction, everything that you do on spirit swap including interacting with the new tokenomics that we've designed, right? If you don't understand it in 15 seconds, we can just assume that you're going to go to our competitor, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the first thing that we thought when we look at spirit swap was uh, this shit's really complicated, <laughs> right? Like I mentioned, we have those like five or six tokens, right? Yeah. Spirit, in spirit, Lin spirit, rain spirit, bin spirit. When I took over, I was like, what are these tokens? I don't understand what I'm looking at. And so if me as someone deeply invested in, in the space is confused, wow. Who is how is Joe Schmo brand new to Phantom just made his MetaMask account yesterday afternoon because his buddy showed him? How is he going to understand? Do I really expect that guy to get into Gitbook and read 12 pages of documentation? No, it has to be understandable and legible on those first 15 or 20 seconds. And we believe we have a model that really represents that while also being incredibly powerful. So we're super stoked um, on that because it was built first and foremost, not by devs. It was built by users who say, this is a system I would use, and this is a system I understand because I've worked with a lot of devs and they're all very talented, but sometimes they uh, build things to be very devy, <laughs> yeah. if that makes sense. So our team is really, we, we work really, really cool with each other where our devs respect the team enough that, right, they said, uh, my CTO said, can you please build the tokenomics? And I, I'm, I'm not a dev. And I said, okay. Right. Um, and so that's the kind of relationship we have where we all trust each other on the team so much that my dev looked at it and he said, it's great. We'll build it. Right. Um, so we're stoked for that, that it's built first and foremost with that user perspective and not the how can we squeeze as much fees and, and sneaky business and and leveraging as much you know capital as possible. But really, first and foremost, for the people that are going to be using the system. Fantastic. Excited to see its debut. We just want to thank Mascot spirit come in the chat with us um when you when you're ready to drop that hot alpha be sure be sure <laughs> oh, to I'll bring be it ready. here but um yeah the exciting stuff we were we were just intrigued to you know hear your guys story since it's a little unique um so yeah thanks for being here today yeah. hey thank you guys for having me I, I i really appreciate it and behalf on the whole team who i represent they do all the heavy lifting i'm just the guy who schedules the meetings uh, they're very, very appreciative that you guys would give us the time to come over here and talk a little bit about spirit swap and 
and the product that we all love. It's it's home for all of us, and and we're not going anywhere. We will be with Spirit Swap till the end, and ideally there won't be an end. So. <laughs> Yeah, thanks so much, Mascot. Really great talking to you. I want to thank everybody for listening uh, or watching this on YouTube, Spotify, X.com, all your favorite podcasting platforms. If you could do us a favor, please like and subscribe to the X feed or the YouTube channel, hopefully both, and tell some people about it. I hope you guys found this episode uh, fun, interesting. Uh, We covered a wide range of stuff. It was really an honor to speak to Mascot from the new Spirit team. Uh, There's some little alpha in there for you guys. So be sure to tune in next week. We're going to go back to our original schedule Tuesday, Friday, and uh, we'll see you then, folks. Bye-bye.